Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and a continuing series on the Mr. FPGA DE10 Nano Project. Today I got a really fun, exciting, and probably the longest Mr. video I've done so far for you guys, and that is the setup guide and quote-unquote review of the X68000 Core. Now this is much more of a setup guide than it is a review, because my review is it's not done, but it's still spectacular. But this is a hard core to understand and get used to, so I want to walk you through every single part in the process. Before we get too far involved, though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we have a Patreon link down below in the description as well. But the main thing I want to do is talk about from start to finish how to get this core onto your mister, how to make it function, because it is complicated. Now, this may come down with update, depending on which one you use, and I'm going to show you the manual way to install this core. And this is basically verbatim of how you would install any core. But you'll see here in the description, it's going to show you what different formats are supported for floppy disks and for hard drive images, because the X68000 could use both. It does support the MT32 Pi Hat for MIDI, and it's just going to give you basic instructions on how to install it. What I'm going to do is show you how to do that here. You want to go to the Releases tab, and you're going to see a bunch of different files. We're going to have boot ROM, boot.v3, and then we're going to have the RBF file as well, and it is dated. The RBF file is the core. All you do is click on the heading of the file that you need. I'll leave a description below the list of the files that you want, and all you're going to do is download them. To get the core onto your mister, you're going to go into the computer folder and you're just going to drag and drop that RBF file over into the computer folder. You'll see here it's going to tell me it's already installed. That's because I've already installed it. But if you haven't, it'll just copy right over. And you will see that it is dated 2021 12 14. That's December 14th of 2021. Follow those dating conventions to make sure you have the most recent core on there. And then when that's done, you're going to go over to the X68000 core and you're going to put that boot.rom, that boot3.vhd, as well as the blank disk file right above there at the top. Those are what you're going to need to get this core running. But getting right into the boot menu, it's not really going to do anything. And this is very different compared to loading ROMs onto something like the Super Nintendo core or anything like that. You're going to see right up at the top, we have a couple options but we're not quite ready to play games yet. This core is not difficult to set up, but you want to understand exactly how it functions and you want to realize that some of the disc games take a very long time to load. So sometimes you're going to think it's not working, but it is. But teasing you with Final Fight, if we just go into the main screen here, the first thing you want to do is redefine your buttons for the controller you're using. But you're not just going to need a controller for this core, you're also going to want to have a keyboard hooked up and ready to go. You don't need to use it for all the games, but it is going to be important. Any USB keyboard should work. I usually use an Apple keyboard. That works fine. I've got a cheap USB keyboard that broke when I was making this video. It confused me. It wouldn't work. And I don't know how that died, but it just did. But you'll see here, we have different floppy disk images. And I can't tell you where to get those, but it's pretty easy if you know how to Google things. But all you need to do is set disk 0 as disk 1 and disk 1 as disk 2 and reset and it will start loading. Now I know that sounds confusing and I will go over it more later, but 0 equals 1 and 1 equals 2 in this instance. The reason we need that keyboard is when we load this game up here, we're going to see an option menu for what type of sound we want. We can use the MT32, but if you don't have the number one button on the keyboard, you're not going to get by that screen. Some of the MIDI screens allow you to get past with the controller, some don't. Twin B here, you have to have a keyboard hooked up. So some people may think it froze there, it's not working. You really just need to have a keyboard. Now I'm not showing this in MIDI, I'll talk about MIDI in a little bit. And I do have a video of that before, talking about how to set the MIDI Pi hat that I'll link below. But go ahead and listen to this music because it is quite spectacular. And I'll be right back and tell you more about how we're getting this core going, loading floppies and loading hard disks. But enjoy!
I just love the x68000 version of Twin B. The music is incredible. And showing you guys the PC Engine version here, you will infinitely be able to tell why the x68000 is such an interesting piece of hardware to use because it is basically arcade perfect. Neo Geo games were developed on the x68000. A lot of Capcom's arcade games, CPS 1 and 2, were developed on the x68000. So you get near perfect, if not perfect, arcade ports to this computer. And the reason why this Mr. Core is so incredible and I love it so much is that an x68000 computer can cost multiple thousands of dollars. It is delicate equipment, the power supplies die all the time, it takes a lot of knowledge to get one running and to keep it running. So to have something like it working in Mister is spectacular, it is definitely my favorite core. What I mentioned about the floppy disks, if you want to reset, you need to eject both FDD0 and FDD1 and then reset the system. That'll bring you back to the main menu where we can load other floppy disk image games. FDD0 and FDD1 correlate to disk 1 and disk 2 of any individual game. So just add one number and then you'll get something like a final fight loading on your mister. Now I know I'm showing some footage here of just the gameplay, but just remember that. There's a weird naming convention in computer systems. Zero is usually the first option, and one is usually the second option. It doesn't make much sense if you imagine it, but just remember, if you see those floppy disk images and it says disk one of two and two of two, you put disk one in FDD zero, you put disk two in FDD one, and then you hit reset and it will work perfectly fine. But what I love about this core as well is we do get all of the awesome options. Now, shadow paths don't seem to be working, or they weren't doing much in my core hopefully that gets upgraded as things go along it did change the color ever so slightly but i'm not seeing any shadow mask on the screen but we do still get those internal scale filters and some of those look really good with the x68000 now just a caveat you're really not going to be able to get this working well or if at all on a 15 kilohertz crt television it might work it might not work you have to change some settings in the ini file it is custom to the type of setup you're working with so as opposed to showing it to you if you really need help just join my discord and i'll point you to the other discord where mr people live as well i have done it it's just very complicated but the great thing about this is just how easy it is. If you want to load a hard disk image, you're going to go to SASI or SASI. It's a variation of SCSI. Mount the disk image and it will load up. Here we have that option as well for the MIDI, but in this instance, the controller does work. Select the option you want and the hard disk is going to load into whatever game you have here. Right now I have Akumajo Dracula this is the Castlevania Chronicles that we got on PlayStation 1, but it's the X68000 original where that game came from, and that's awesome. Hard disk drive images are loaded very quickly. Be warned, if you're loading floppy disks, this is replicating how the original X68000 worked, and that means some floppy disks are going to take you three to four minutes to load the game. Just go ahead, load it, watch it load, go get a beer, have a drink, go to the bathroom, come back, you'll be playing X68000 games. But just remember that it does take an infinite amount of time compared to what we're used to to get these things loading. But when they are loaded up, they are so spectacular. This is one of my favorite Castlevania games of all time. And although there are still slight graphical glitches in the top, this plays perfectly. If you wanted to get an X68000 to play this game and buy a copy of it, you're probably looking into the $3,000 mark. You'll see that there is still that tiny graphical glitch, but nothing that affects the gameplay. This is saving us thousands upon thousands of dollars, and when I did the preview video for this core, I didn't feel like it was ready to do a setup guide yet just because it is quite difficult, but I believe in you, and if you do have any questions, just leave them down below. I am happy to talk to you. But like I said, if you want to get rid of those floppy disks, just eject them and then load that hard disk up. If there's floppies loaded into the system, the hard drive will not load up. So if you're trying to boot a hard disk image and you keep getting the last floppy game you played, that means you haven't ejected them yet. But these Tantan images, if you go into the games directory, and like I said, can't give them to you, very easy to find, you're going to see that there's different compilations on virtual hard disks that are all going to have the games in the directories. Each directory has the own files for that game. So if you go into something like Bubble Bobble, nine times out of 10, the start.bat file is going to be the executable. Don't look for exe, it's a .bat in this instance. Go ahead and hit enter on that once. It's gonna give you the option to hit enter again, and that's going to boot the game. It'll take about two seconds. This is in real time, and you're gonna see here that we're into Bubble Bobble. 
very, very shortly. Just remember that start.bat file because not many of the games are actually listed with executables in their own name. It's not like bubblebobble.bat. Just look for the word start. If you can't find it, look for another bat file that looks like it's near the top of that file hierarchy. Nine times out of ten, that's going to be the executable. It's just weird that it's in .bat. But here you go, an arcade perfect port of Bubble Bobble running on the Mr. in the X68000 core. If you want to buy a copy of this game for the X68000, it's quite expensive. If you want to buy a copy for the FM Towns, another arcade perfect port, and I do happen to own it, I bought it a long time ago, it's like $700 right now. With Mr., we can just play it for free. If we want to get back to that hard drive menu, we do need to reset the core though. It will go to whatever the last hard drive image you had mounted was. So now we're back through A to D. If you want to get to a different hard drive image, I will show you that very shortly. But just remember, to reset any virtual disk, a hard drive, or those floppies, you always need to reset the core in between. There's no way through the menu just to launch back to the operating system or to the hard drive itself. It's just a way that the X68000 functions and you have to work within that because it's no other way to really do it. But if you do want to get to a different hard drive image, just go ahead and load up the menu, pick the hard drive image you want, and it'll automatically reset the mister for you. And now we're into a different virtual hard drive that's got a bunch of different games that we can play. And that is absolutely spectacular. The library of the X68000 is excellent, and it's basically all covered in these files. And like I said, just Google you know, X68000 hard drive images, D88 floppies, you will find these resources easily. Now there's one other tricky thing about the X68000 and that is the amount of RAM that it has has to be set by the user. It does not auto detect how much memory is in the actual computer nor in the Mr. setup here. How you can change that is if you use that blank disk image, that's not actually blank, it's a copy of Human68000 for the X68000 computer. It's very DOS-like. If you've ever used DOS, you will understand it. And when you load that up, you're going to get a command prompt. Just type switch and hit enter. This is going to allow us to change a lot of different variables within the X68000 itself. Right at the top, you're going to see memory. This is really the only thing that you're going to want to worry about. A lot of these other options were for hardware that the X68000 had, like monitors hooked up to it. But there are a lot of different things you can change. Don't touch any of them except memory. Generally, you won't even have to touch memory, but some games are very particular. The X68000 allows for a maximum of 12 megabytes of RAM. It's being read out as kilobytes here. But some games can be touchy and they want a certain amount of RAM. If you have 12 megabytes and a game's expecting 4, it may be coded in a way that it doesn't allow you to boot it without 4. Once you've selected what memory you want, I suggest just using 12 megabytes. Come down to this kanji down here, that's the exit menu, and hit the letter Y. That will save the settings for you. And all we've done now is told this X68000 virtually that there is 12 megabytes of RAM, or in this instance, you just changed the RAM quantity suckers. We spoofed it, and now we can get games that might need more RAM loading. I can't even remember if Eltoe Princess needs the extra RAM or not, it's just how I edited it together. But do keep that in mind that if you're getting any RAM errors, you will need Google Translate to translate some of the error messages over. If it says it's expecting a certain amount of RAM or it says you don't have enough RAM, this is one of the ways in which you can change that by using that switch.x program on that blank disk. It's really useful, it's really important, and once we actually get into the game here, you'll see it's extremely functional. And that's why I love this core for Mr. so much. I prefer using this, even though it's not finished, to software x68000 emulation on a PC, because a lot of the things you need to do in emulation in Windows, you need to do via command prompts. The Mr. menu takes a lot of that difficulty out of the way, and it's in English. Some of the emulators for the x68000 are just in kanji, and they are quite difficult to use. I'll never do a hardware comparison series because now I don't feel like I need to spend thousands of dollars on an X68000, but if someone's watching and they're in Chicago or in the US and wants to let me borrow one, hey, I'd love to do it, I just don't want to spend the money. And that's the best part about this core. It has saved me thousands of dollars because now I no longer feel compelled to add a 68000 to my computer collection. Now I mentioned earlier I did an entire video on a MIDI and I will leave a link to that below, but I can't recommend enough that you pick up the MT32 Pi hat because the X68000 is an incredible system and when you put MIDI into the mix it's even better. Listen to this and tell me you don't love how it sounds.
Is some of the best music in video gaming ever. But yeah, that's the setup guide and quote unquote review for the Sharp X68000 on Mister. If you guys need any help whatsoever, leave me a comment. I want to get you guys playing this. Sure, that do me a huge favor. Go down below, it, like, and subscribe. This is a long video to make and I spent a lot of energy to do it. I'll be back next week with more Mister videos and a lot of videos throughout the week as well. But yeah, if you got a Mister and you're not playing X68000, today's the day to get going with it. Sure, to that, see you guys next time. Bye bye.